Banks, Liz Arkin, Eco Village for sponsoring my visit out here. I enjoyed revisiting LA for the first time in 23 years. I see some good differences since last I was here, and I lived here from 80 to 85. The title of this talk is Everything You Need to Know About Local Currency. That's a tall order. I visit you from a time before email, before the World Wide Web. And the local currency started in Ithaca, began without the benefit of those technologies. But at the same time, what you are doing is giving dignity to labor, giving dignity to skills, time, tools, and talent, which are not recognized necessarily by the formal economy. I'm going to say that poverty is not a lack of dollars but of lack of networks. Mm -hmm. And this city, as all cities, are full of hundreds and thousands of networks, religious, ethnic, athletic, and, and so forth, which ostensibly are a basis of trust. Upon that basis of trust, you can have a currency, you can have your own monetary system whether it is paper, or electronic, or a combination of these. You have these. So we don't have a budget problem strictly. We have an imagination problem. If we can imagine a better economy, if we can imagine ourselves as powerful part of this economy, then we can take hard control of this economy and make it work for us. The economy should be fun. It should not be a dismal treadmill. That makes us run faster and faster and faster. And more and more of us fall off. We should be able to have a good time. We should be able to have good housing, good food, good health care, without terrific stress. This is the aim of an economy. And to be able to pass that kind of an economy to the next generation. Children, beautiful children by the millions, deserve an economy, deserve a city as beautiful as they are. Life should become easier rather than more difficult. So in Ithaca, New York, in 1991, before email and before the World War II, it occurred to me that if we were to have enough money in Ithaca, we'd have to print it ourselves. <laughs> so I went to my computer. I have a background in marketing, a background in uh, city management, and a background in arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was not difficult. I, I haven't been a graphic artist and a journalist, and it has not been difficult to imagine creating money. So I went to my computer and I designed money. <laughs> money denominated in hours, not dollars, but hours, because we did not have gold. We in Ethica did not have piles of gold in our vaults or basements. We had time. We had tools. We had talent and skills. We could trade us with each other. So I designed paper money denominated in hours. I'll pass around some samples of this. I ask you to return it because it is real money. <laughs> <laughs> and one hour was denominated as at one hour of basic labor or $10, which at the time, 20 years ago, doubled the minimum wage in the Ithaca area. At the same time, professionals were entitled to charge multiple Ithaca hours per hour. But in the spirit of equity, in the spirit of becoming friends and lovers and political allies, becoming members of the same community, a lot of professionals lowered their hourly rate voluntarily to meet the capability of the lowest income people to pay, of a cultural shift away from becoming winners and losers to becoming members of a community, a voluntary process. So the paper money began to circulate in 1991, 
and uh, among primarily individuals who did uh, child care, home baked cooking, uh, home baked uh, cooking, uh, who had uh, bookkeeping skills or whatever they were able to do in their home. But increasingly over the years, businesses, 500 businesses, not only thousands of individuals, but 500 businesses, including a bank, which took in the hours for the full price of all bank fees and part of loan repayment. The hospital for part of the fees. Movie theaters, bowling alleys, health clubs, restaurants, you name it, everything. Our directory, called Our Town, H-O-U-R Town, published six times a year, became it had more categories than the yellow pages. <laughs> and uh, and listed the, the thousands of ways you could spend this cash money. So we, made, we, we began to make loans of this money without charging interest. That is the fundamental monetary revolution because of, we beat the banks. The banks are charging whatever interest, but we provided loans interest free, up to $30,000. That loan was made back to a bank, which was rebuilding new headquarters, building new headquarters, and they, they paid their contractors 5% in local currency. Uh, we made grants to over 100 community organizations, many of which had lost state or federal current, that uh, is state or federal uh, grants, income. We made these grants to local organizations. Um, about 75 farmers market vendors accepted this money. The only thing you couldn't buy with this money at a certain point was health insurance. So I started a health insurance call. <laughs> People paid $100 per year for the thing value of ten dollars per hour. To be members of a co-op that began paying them in exchange for the hundred dollars, nothing. They got discounts with 130 Ithaca area health providers, but gradually, incrementally, we built it such that they were covered for 12 categories of common emergencies like broken bones, ambulance rides, emergency stitches, and bones, anywhere in the world, to specified maximum allowance for $100 a year. We were proving that you didn't need HMOs. We were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We had members in 46 uh, states, including California. Mm -hmm. We featured the oddity reader. The state of uh, New York stepped in and said, you can't do that. And we said, go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> this is how wise may, really. <laughs> I could talk about that. I've written a book titled, How to Take Power among the several books I've read. Uh, and uh, and I, I emphasize in there that we take power by taking power, by saying that we are the authorities. That we decide what the economy does and for whom. When the economy does not work for us, we take control of the economy. Well, the currency is one of several component parts of taking control of the economy. There are assets, there are drawbacks, there are, there, there are ways to compare and contrast both systems. And I would like to merge them so that they, they fit together, so that the benefits of each are available to all. Um, they're both denominated in ours. Ours, ours is a basis of value, that is to say, and this is the new gold standard. Labor is the new gold standard. If you took all of the gold ever produced by human beings, extracted, you would create a cube of gold 60 feet on a side. A cube of gold 60 feet on the side is not a sufficient gold standard on a planet with 7 billion. Being. 
cannot transact all the needs of 7 billion human beings with a cube of gold 60 feet on the side. Each one of us might get a fingernail of gold with that. And so we need a basis of value for transaction among 700, about 1 7 billion human beings, which is based on our capability as human beings, and that is the hour of labor, and that is something we have to count in time dollars. I have been exploring how we can connect these systems because time, because I think hours have been able to be uh, transacted by, as I said, 500 local businesses in the for-profit sector. Restaurants, movie theaters, bowling alleys, home clubs, you name it, anything at all. While in the time dollars are more based on the voluntary exchange, exchange of voluntary services. And I like paper money because it is highly dramatic. <laughs> that is to say, when we started to issue paper money, denominated in hours, the media went nuts. <laughs> because they could show pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and they could show pictures not only of the money, but of people transacting the money <laughs> all over town. And that's an essential part of promoting a local currency, that is to, the, to get the buzz going. And nothing got the buzz going like having a tangible tool of trade. So a time dollar system, a time banking system, can likewise, I believe, incorporate in a systematic basis a paper currency. Um, it would have to be done in a way which matched the legal circumstances and by which time dollars have tax exemption. We did not have tax exemption. We didn't care. We were an, an unassociated associate. We were, uh, we were a bunch of people without any incorporation. We just created money and traded it with each other. None of these agencies could find a law specifically against printing hours as money. So they said, well, we can't find a law specifically against printing hours as money. And uh, I mentioned the other night when I spoke to some folks that the Wall Street Journal called me up and we were doing a story. Because, in fact, there were uh, several thousand stories written about it in hours. I did one, two, or three media interviews a day. And, uh, the Wall Street Journal said, is this legal? I said, yeah, it's legal. I did not say, oh, I don't know, or maybe not, or who knows, or geez, I, I'm sorry, I scared to hear you ask the question. I said, yeah, it's legal, yeah. And so the headline in the Wall Street Journal was, well, communities print local and legal currency, which would intimidate an bureaucrat. <laughs> so, well, if the Wall Street Journal says it, then. So, uh, so it was a lot of fun. You know, I'm, and fun is an important part of the economy. Um, I would like to see this become a national basis of transaction. Ours as money. It is our value as workers, as people who create goods and services, and tremendous creativity that we all have, that we would love to share the beauty of what we create and offer goods and services, could be available in a marketplace far more vast than the formal economy, instead of looking in the classified as who will hire me so I can live so I can pay my rent? Who will hire me so I can pay my utilities? Who will hire me so I can send my kids to college? Who will hire me so I can pay for food? Who will hire me so I can pay for the car? We create our own economy gradually and increasingly. We decrease our dependence on these systems. I call this a mutual enterprise economy. It is not bloodthirsty capitalism. And it is not bleeding heart liberalism. It says we bring to the marketplace a real place where we, where we become friends and lovers and political allies 
a real geographic place, whether it is Altadena, Pasadena, or any of the places where the time banking system is established. We bring our greatest capabilities to this place, and we, we based on hours of labor, uh, and it's equivalent in goods and services, however we define that, I hope I mentioned that the Ithaca hour was denominated a one hour of basic labor or ten dollars, which 20 years ago was double the minimum wage. We doubled the minimum wage in Ithaca for basic services, for basic. Uh, to imagine the hour as a new gold standard, the hour as a new basis of exchange throughout our nation and throughout our world. Uh, I've designed a prototype of a, a United States hour. This is the high American. <laughs> <laughs> but all social change, every bit of social change has come from that arrogance. The end of slavery, starting the nation, the eight-hour work, votes for women, social security, civil rights, absolutely everything that we presume is our right as Americans and has advanced our society came from a direct confrontation with laws which no longer serve. These laws were overthrown. Legislatures did not wake up one morning and say, slavery just seems so unfair. <laughs> or women, really, they're smart and they should vote. <laughs> or working people to death at 16 hours a day is perhaps inhuman. No. These changes happened, every one of them, when people became dangerously angry. I'm sorry to say. And that is a process history as, as insisted over the, the generations. It is essential for creating a fair, just, reasonable society. Uh, local currency is a component of a much larger process by which we assert our dignity as human beings, our control of the economy. Who controls the land, the law, and the money in our current economy? Banks. Banks. Do banks exist primarily to keep our money safe? No. Do mortgage companies exist primarily to provide us housing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do insurance companies exist primarily to give us peace of mind? <laughs> Does the electric company exist primarily to brighten our lives? <laughs> Does the gas company exist primarily to keep us warm? Does the grocery store exist primarily to nourish us? Do schools exist primarily to excite people about learning? <laughs> and to prepare us to be effective citizens of a creative and beautiful economy? Does the government exist primarily to, prim to distribute resources equitably? and to moderate uh, inequalities. No. No, no, and no. <laughs> well, I wish somebody would say yes. But unfortunately not. So uh, does the does the uh, does the news media exist primarily to prepare us to be informed citizens to uh, <laughs> Which news media? Exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Democracy now. CPFK. CPFK. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, 
So these, exist, these institutions exist primarily to keep themselves alive and to aggrandize their power authorities to the exclusion of the rest of us. And therefore, it is necessarily, it, necessary, it seems to me, to take control again over the economy. And you guys, who are part of the time banking system, are essential first component of that. The land, the law, and the money. Um, I wrote a book titled, How to Take Power. Because I've been arrogant a long time. And the idea is that where every institution does not serve us, we need to take control of it. And that every institution has a point of vulnerability. I mentioned this the other night. Every institution has a point of vulnerability, no matter how gigantic it may seem, no matter how impenetrable it may seem. We can find that point of vulnerability and turn the switch, and it deflates. And we become powerful. I've done this re uh, repeatedly. Made a lot of enemies, <laughs> but the good kind of enemies. The kind of enemies who are enemies of our best interests of our survival. And you can do this without making personal enemies. It's nicer to be nice. It really is nicer to be nice. But when we are being shoved against the wall, we have to fight back. And fighting back uh, within the norms of political discourse and electoral process is quite often not sufficient. And so you need to go for the gun. <laughs> and they have a gun in this moment. Anyway, uh, I have, I think the most challenging of my, thing I might suggest you tonight is that we need to transition beyond the middle class ideal. We need to get off the trend to the maximum extent we can. Time banking is a powerful component of that process. But we need to control our housing our food, our health care. And we will face opposition to that change. To that change. We need to transition beyond the middle class ideal to what I call the mutual class ideal. The mutual class thrives by creating cooperatarian base for food <coughs> and fuel and housing and health to get off of the corporate trend. A gigantic process, an inevitable process, because the children and grandchildren will not have an easy way of life unless we do. Those of us who are facing old age, will not have an easy old age. Those of us who are already old, hey, we've got the best of it. I come to this town and I pay like 25 cents to, get, to, take, a tra to take a train ride. Wow, this is great. We boomers have the best of everything. We inhale, we inherit the best of everything. We created it. We created tie-dye, we created bell-bots, <laughs> love beads, <laughs> power, power. Yes, we're terrific. <laughs> the difficulty with we needed to create co-ops that would entitle our children and grandchildren to live a life as easy. In 1970, the minimum wage was $1.92. On that, you could buy six. Huh? 165 and 145. What? Yeah. 1970? Out here it might have been yeah. terrible. 1970 I came here and 165 now. Really? Out here it was worse. I don't know. I don't understand. At any rate, the dollar was at its peak of power in 1970 and has declined ever since. And so the society and the economy, the, the, the latest generation, the millennials, and their children are inheriting. It's more and more difficult. In 1992, I wrote an article. I said, I think this country is being deliberately converted into a third world nation. Yeah. 
I said a lot of unpopular things that I was wanting to and, and I said this in Ithaca to my, my best friend, my boomer friends. I was put on the ballot in, 19, uh, in 2003 uh, uh, as the candidate for the mayor of Ithaca, New York, on the Green Party line. And I said, you know, well, we need to get rid of our cars and our flush cars. I got 500 bucks. <laughs> but that was, that was 12%, unfortunately. So my best friends realized, so I was, I was because I started the Ithaca Hours program in the Ithaca Health Alliance, I was lifted up on shoulders. I was carried around town. I was a big man on campus. But then when I started to say, we, should, we need to really get rid of our cars and our flush toys, and all of Ithaca needs to become an intentional community <laughs> on behalf of the children and grandchildren. Then the people who had lifted me on their shoulders put me down back on the ground. <laughs> so, well, that's very nice. That's right. <laughs> so, that is the nature of leadership. So, so, to move beyond the middle class to the mutual class, the burden of becoming middle class is crushing to the next generation. A few will reach that. They will reach that by being part of the apparatus which helps crush their peers. This is very hard to face. We're all on a treadmill. We have to pay the mortgage or the rent. We have to pay the car. We have to pay the utilities, uh, college education. These are difficult challenges we are connected to many others. And to begin to get off of we join time. We help each other to make life easier rather than more difficult. We decrease our dependence on the institutions which have no motivation but increased numbers of profits. We decrease our dependence on the institutions which do not care about what becomes of us and which in many cases are no longer even owned by. United States entities, which have no national loyalty, which have no local loyalty. If you look on NASDAQ.com, you see who owns the insurance companies, who owns the computer company, who owns, 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 owns. These are global <coughs> investors who do not care at all about what becomes of us, whose only interest is bigger numbers. Bigger numbers that translate into bigger houses for themselves, bigger yachts for themselves. I don't know. It's a crazy system. And a lot of you are even more familiar with it than I am. When we can connect with time banks, connect with local currencies, we take in control of money. We, we need to take control of land. We need to take control of law. We need to understand. We are not subjects, but we are powerful when we get together. That when we do this, we are the gold and the silver. We are the gold and the silver. And we are the treasury. And we are the treasury. So I would invite your, your comments and your questions and conversations. talking about as coordinators a lot is the um, is ta is the is uh, is this uh, is the the fear <laughs> the concern over uh, taxability like this idea of not being able to equate a time dollar with any sort of legal currency amount because of um, because of tax of, of, of tax issues, and so I just was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit, because it sounds like Ithaca Hours actually <coughs> do have a, cor a correlating basis, so if you can elaborate a little bit more on that, um, that would be really helpful. Yeah, Ithaca, um, Ithaca connected people who make transactions of a taxable and a non-taxable nature. And when transactions were made of a taxable nature, that is to say, uh, the, 
the profession which someone offered was the basis of the transaction, then uh, the, the transaction was of a, a taxable nature. When it was between family, friends, and neighbors, and the nature of the transaction was not the primary professional purpose, or often, then it was not a tax in the transaction. Well, then who's, get, who's getting the tab at, like, how many taxes in Ithaca hours? Like, who's getting the tab? Well, because in one Ithaca hour equal $10 US. Like, you can actually go in and, like, redeem it? We had uh, several merchants who had a special Ithaca hour key on the register so that they could keep track. There was no requirement to keep track separately and distinctly about, oh, about Ithaca hour income. But many of them did it because they didn't want any trouble with the IRS. Right. And they wanted to know to track how frequently the IRS came in. But the IRS wasn't then coming in saying, well, you earned this, you earned No, it was very curious why we had no problem with the IRS. I know early on, an IRS agent left a business card with a bookstore saying, have him contact me. I never paid any attention. I didn't contact you. Of course not. Whoa, I So we never contacted them, and we never had any problem. And as I say, you know, we went to the highest levels of authority, and nobody found a problem. Curiously, I thought it was in Eagle, which was part of the fun. But it, it just, I don't understand. It was like a magic act. <laughs> it happened and happened and happened. And people joined it. And the people who ridiculed it, why they just sort of gradually joined it. it was a, yeah, so, 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 so in terms of that answer, in terms of that answer um, um, we told people that transactions of a taxable nature were taxable. That they should report. We didn't care if they reported it or not. We told people if we had said, oh, this is a way to avoid taxes, this is a way to screw the IRS, who cares about the IRS, the Federal Reserve, the government, screw them. If we had said that, then we would have brought down the heat. Henry Kissinger would have been interviewed on television. <laughs> well, this undermines the dollar upon which all our economy depends. <laughs> no, but no, and I just said, you know, it's win 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 win. When I did on national television say, well, this is a this is an alternative to the Federal Reserve, and this is an alternative to domination by giant corporations. Of course, they cut that off. <laughs> CBS this morning, though, did it. The guy who was explaining his visit to Ithaca, he said, well, the people in Ithaca think that this is real money because it's backed by real people. And they're goods and times and tools. And they say, and the guy at CBS this morning says, and they think that the US dollar is funny money. <laughs> because it's backed by less than nothing. By a six trillion dollar debt, which is now sixteen trillion dollar debt. And what is happening a lot there, which lends itself to the same sort of thought, is that, for instance, um, I'm, I'm a poet, and in the poetry community in Seattle, a poet got very ill, and she needed to come up with about $20,000 for some health care um, tests and such. And she got it, like, in a week. So this crowd fund, I don't remember what it's called, yeah. the little Kickstarter. fund, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and all these things are yeah. successful because people are generous, people do want, it doesn't hurt me to give $20, yeah. you know, and so it's very possible. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about here is possible, we just all have to do it. <laughs> yes, and when you can create your own clinics that you own, when you can create your own medical schools and your own hospitals, you are rebuilding an old American tradition a hundred years ago, there were hundreds of mutual aid organizations. People paid pennies a week through the funny handshake people, like the News, the Elks, the Odd Fellows, the Women of the World. Hundreds of such organizations that paid pennies a week to be members of the organizations. And these organizations built hospitals, orphanages, 
own folks' home. They paid sickness and death benefits. They owned. Then the corporate sector moved in and said, oh, there's a lot of money there. And so we are legislating these mutual aid organizations to the margin. They're no longer able to create their own health emergency. So I had to fight in New York State, as I said. I fight in New York State for the right to do this. We had to defy the law in order to establish the law in New York State. Is there uh, physical boundaries for Ithaca hours? And um, if not, is there any reason why it couldn't expand and all the way to Pasadena? <laughs> so I, I, def, I, just, I created a 20 mile radius around Ithaca and said, this is the Ithaca time zone. <laughs> Ithaca hours, Ithaca time zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, we issued money into anyone who lived or did business within that 20 mile radius. You issued money with currency. local currency. Just but, like that. Yes, no someone said. Initial exchange. Right. And the issuance of the money was in several ways. If someone agreed to be published in our direct, we paid them initially for Ithaca Hours with $10 each. $40 as a starter amount. So they had to offer the, seat, the yes. service that they professionally offered. Right. We did not like give the money away. Giving money away is like, well, we're going to have some toilet paper. We don't care. It's random. We pay people who are agreeing to be listed in this directory as published backers for the money. The first service they did to this money, the first provision uh, to the community was to be listed in this directory as a backer of this money. They backed the money. The money, you know, dollars and national currencies are backed by less than nothing, by trillions of dollars of national debt. What do you think would be the best starting point? Would, be, would it be to publicize the idea of a, of a local currency, or would it be to go out to um, the businesses, the service, the goods and services providers, and start doing that first? Well, I would speak to what my experience, and it, of course, other people have a different experience, and you can explore. We're all explorers. We're all pioneers, even after some years. And in Ithaca, I, I designed the paper money. I made prototype designs, just black and white Xerox copies. And I started to wave these at my friends. And I said, this is going to be money. We'll trade it with each other. Sign up here. And I gave them a clipboard. And they said, all right, well, I offer this, and I need this. And to their credit, you know, they didn't say, this is a dumb idea. You get us all in trouble. It can't be legal, no, whatever. They said, all right, we'll try this out. You know, and I created over the next three months, I created a list of 90 people who agreed, including several businesses, including several farmers, including the toy store. I gosh, even the bank it was right off the bat, the credit union. And that list I published, and I announced in the very first issue of this directory. This is the greatest thing that ever happened to Ithaca. This is wonderful. This will take control of the whole world. <laughs> and, and well, by, by lying through my teeth over the last several years, you know, by saying this is so, which is the basis of advertising. <laughs> I have a degree in advertising. I've never used it for the deplorable purposes it is, is intended. But it is that idea of like saying, this is reality. And all of us have that authority. If you understand that you are surrounded by marketing and messages and advertising, there's just people sitting around saying, whoa, this piece of crap is worth is worth $100. And this, this worthless, horrible thing that will destroy your life and your health is, you must have this. And this thing which will burden you forever, you must have this in order to be wonderful. Right. 
I taught uh, I taught urban studies at uh, Temple University for a few years. And I ended up by saying to the students, you know, you have no moral obligation to the gay student. Yes. It is the obligation of older generations to transfer knowledge to the next generations painlessly. Right. So that society can progress. You may have a legal and a financial obligation, especially if your parents have co signed on this, but don't sweat the morality of it. You're being screwed. Yep. Mm -hmm. How do you see services versus labor? I mean, it is, there's a difference in, in practice where you provide service for labor, and then you're saying, well, you can only earn so much for you to spend it. But in this time and age, we, we are in the tread, tread system and we provide a service, we're shifting as a service government system, we provide services versus labor, but in the micro scale, like us, like how would you accommodate or like, how do you say, do we have to be part of both worlds now? I mean, yeah, ultimately you will need to take control of land and of law as well as money. And this is a revolution. Yeah. And this will happen because more and more people are left behind and left out. That's right. And the next generations will inherit a difficult situation, to say the least. So yes, I think that, uh, uh, I've defined laws. I, do, I, I write laws, none of which have been enacted. <laughs> because I want to take control away, you know? But, you know, you push, 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 push. And uh, gradually, uh, you, will, you will necessarily, as the situation becomes more difficult for the next generations, uh, create either legally or extra-legally, non-violently or violently. This is, this is not a threat, this is history and everything changes, and the justice will be done, at least for a time. My idea with local currency and uh, these other initiatives, I started by 18 organizations and campaigns over the years, is to assert that there are nonviolent alternatives to a domination, to a degradation, that life can be wonderful and beautiful. And, uh, And that if it is to be so, we will need to invent it. If we want a better future, we need to invent it. So it begins with each of us. Each of us has the authority and the power to imagine and then to combine, to collaborate, and to take control. <laughs>